Is it too late to buy Ethereum? That's what we're discussing in today's video, we're talking about Metcalf's Law, Ethereum 2.0, and why in my opinion, it is not too late to buy Ethereum. So let's get right into it. I recently made a video on what Ethereum is and why it's important for anyone who's brand new to this. Um, I'm assuming for this video, you've already watched that or you understand Ethereum fundamentally. So let's get right into it. Essentially, the reason that I think Ethereum has so much more room to grow is when you look at Metcalf's Law. So really what this states is a computing network. How do you value it? How do you go, okay, you know, there's a piece of real estate, like I'm here in, uh, where am I? <laughs> Izmir in Turkey, I just, I've been bouncing around so many different southern uh, cities here in Turkey and I just blanked for a second. But uh, anyways, I'm here in Izmir and when you look at real estate, it's pr fairly easy to value these things because you go, okay, what's the, you know, potential rent occupancy, all these different metrics kind of combine to have a great value. But when you're looking at a computer network system, so even even things like telecommunications networks, which in the very beginning is what Metcalf's Law was talking about. So, for example, look at Facebook, look at Instagram, look at Twitter. Would these things be valuable if you were the only one using it? Or if it was you, some guy in France, some guy in Australia, and two people in the UK? Would it be very valuable then? Well, no, because it doesn't have that really uh, mass effect. It doesn't have that network effect, a lot of people call it. So, with this, basically Metcalf's Law states, how do you value this? Well, you take the total amount of users squared. So if, if it's, uh, you know, if it's Facebook, this is really how they have that moat around their product. So many, try, so many people try and compete with Facebook. There's always, you know, this new social media site. But if they don't have a true edge, like for example, something like TikTok did a completely different thing. It's nothing like Facebook, right? Um, or something like uh, Twitter is, is very different. So with, with these different things, you have to go, okay, all of these basically have their own individual niche, right? But none of these current social media platforms are really the network for money. Like for example, LinkedIn's the network for business people. It has Metcalf's Law in there. And when you look at Ethereum and you look at Metcalf's Law, when you compare this with Bitcoin in the previous 2017 cycle, the charts actually line up. So when you look at the total number of users, not necessarily the price or the market cap, but when you just look at the users and how you do this is the active wallets in the network. So with Bitcoin, if you looked at the active wallets in 2017, it's comparable with Ethereum now. And guess what? Ethereum has so much more room to grow. It's still in this ETH 1.0 stage and it's kind of teetering on the edge of ETH 2.0. And what you have to understand why it's so hard to really roll this out, Serenity is kind of their name for it, is because there's a, there's a lot of issues with scalability with Ethereum. So moving from proof of work, so having actual physical miners to proof of stake where people are staking their Ethereum um, is, is kind of a hard transition to go through. And this is one of the reasons that, uh, you know, this, this ETH 2.0 has been lagging a little bit. And uh, really one of the things you have to take into account is when, when you're investing in something like Ethereum, the way that I look at it is, okay, if, if I could have invested in the railroads, if I could have invested in when cars were first run, it's like all these historical cycles, all these really changes, or the printing press, like if I could have in, uh, invested in the printing press, or been with Rockefeller and invested in different things with oil, there, there's so many different opportunities throughout history. And th there are so many, but they're so limited in a lifetime, that's the thing. So. If you like zoom all the way out and go all of history, how many opportunities are there? You could probably identify looking back in, in retrospect. But if we look at today, you know, what are the opportunities of today? Well, looking at things towards innovation, and in my opinion, the there's a couple industries that really need disrupting. I think education needs a massive, massive shift. I think financials and investing need a massive, massive shift. That's really what blockchain is doing, having be, things be more transparent. Uh, whereas the current system is like, man, if, if you're some some wealthy kid, who, who grew up in a family that gave him like a, he, they gave him a trust fund, you can be an accredited investor just off that. You could know zero about investing, know zero. Someone who's let's say 60 years old, who spent their whole life investing and they don't quite have a million dollars in net worth, they can't invest in private companies. But this, this, this uh, trust fund kid can. So do you think this is fair? Do you think this is transparent? That's kind of what I, my question is. And I personally don't. That's why I love talking about things on this channel that are replacing this, that are kind of moving this old traditional system out the way and bringing in the new. And with Ethereum, the reason that I think it's so important is because it's really the ground structure for these applications that are replacing these. For example, when you look at even the Polkadot ecosystem with like Pokestarter or TrustSwap or DuckDowDime, these things interact with Ethereum, okay? So 
maybe like for example pokestarter is built on the polkadot ecosystem but the polkadot ecosystem is focused on interoperability and if you think about this like uh let's say pokestarter or polkadot is the linkedin in the crypto space and this is just a hypothetical so they're more focused on an individual niche but ethereum is kind of like the facebook like they're kind of the the mass adoption in my opinion in in the actual crypto market now it doesn't quite have mass adoption in the global market quite yet but anyone familiar with crypto understands why ethereum is so powerful because so many of these incredible applications are being built on top of ethereum with the solidity programming language so again when you're investing in ethereum or eth um the thing you have to keep in mind in my opinion is you're investing in the future of money the internet of money and this is one of those things i think it's it's hard for some people to wrap their head around they, they just go okay but if i buy now and it goes down oh no like i lost money well the first rule of investing is don't invest anything that you're not willing to lose so especially in a market like market like crypto that's why i talk about all different investment sectors i don't just talk about crypto even though in this bull run i think it's one of the most important things to keep your eye on and truly understand that's why i've been talking so much about it and really covering these interesting projects um you know there will be a day at the end of this bull run where it probably starts shifting more towards the commodity space shifting more towards emerging market real estates um and looking at different opportunities yes i i will always believe in blockchain fundamentally if we can keep this transparent public uh system going the way it is and truly i think ethereum and bitcoin are these kind of two top dogs so if if somebody came up to you and they said okay not financial advice but i'm brand new to crypto how would you invest in this i would say currently 60 40 i would say 60 percent ethereum 40 percent bitcoin now some people may get mad at that but that's that's keeping in mind that you're not just going to be binary about this you're not just going to go oh i'll either sell all my bitcoin or sell all my ethereum no no, no. you can sell a fourth of it you can sell a fifth but you can sell a tenth of it so with Ethereum, I think it has much more room to grow in this bull run than Bitcoin does. So yes, Bitcoin is incredible. As a long-term hold, I'm all in on Bitcoin, um, especially you know for my uh, individual portfolio just for cryptocurrency. But the thing with Bitcoin is it has such a massive market cap. It's, it's kind of like a cruise ship versus a jet ski. I see some of these lower cap altcoins like a jet ski. Now, Ethereum might be like, uh, I don't know, like a ski boat. So it's, it's still agile, but a cruise ship with Bitcoin yes it can it can make its way but it's going to kind of chug along go slow but steady so i think bitcoin will have its nice corrections in this bull run i've stated that we will definitely see a six-figure bitcoin um i stated that in, in 2020 uh that was kind of my prediction so around a hundred thousand uh, dollars we could see that um definitely by the end of the year in my opinion but again if you're looking at okay bitcoin's already at what sixty two thousand dollars at the time of recording this so if we go from there to 100k that's less than a 50 percent return but ethereum i think it could easily double from here it could most likely get to ten thousand dollars in this bull run now that's my personal price production you have to do your own research but those are just kind of my thoughts on uh, if ethereum is still worth it just kind of explaining that a narrative the thesis around there uh, maybe i can do a much more detailed videos video if you guys are interested in that this was just kind of again laying out uh like a brain dump like kind of how i view this from a very very like high level overview um, not getting down in the weeds with the nitty-gritty things we can do that But I know some people are get uh, confused by some of the technical things and it's better to just kind of keep it macro So that's all for today's video Let me know if you enjoyed it in the comments down below if you think ethereum is too late to invest in uh, And if so, what is your time price? That's what I always ask like people are like, oh, what's your price prediction for this? It's like man, what's your time price? Are do you if, if you think ethereum is too late to buy because you're trying to sell it tomorrow Then I would say yes, it's probably too late to buy go look for go look for something else but if you're looking for a long term, like like I am, I'm I'm looking to hold Ethereum for long term because I believe in it. I believe that I I, I want to help run this network because it's it, since it's now in proof of stake with ETH 2.0 rolling out, um, I would like to kind of have my own piece in this. Again, it's, I think about it like if you could in, could have invested in the railroads or could have invested in the automotive industry when it was first starting. There's a, there's not many times in history like this. So. As I said, let me know in the comments down below what you think about this. Like, subscribe, button all, invest global, and until next time.